I found myself sailing into the deep blue sea in the world of Raft with my companions Joan and Nikisa, armed with the dodgy hook and determination. We went from a small puny raft to an oversized ship, also fighting off the relentless great white Bruce. We have 100 days to explore islands for survival, search oceans and discover the hidden secrets of how the world ended up this way. But without further ado, secure your life jacket and prepare to join us in a world of the endless deep blue sea. Come on boys, I'm in. Meanwhile I was waiting for them to get in, I started by cleaning up the ocean bed for some garbage and enjoying the peaceful view. And if you do enjoy this kind of content, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. We would need a copious amount of trash to start building our plastic raft, so I made a building hammer so I could expand the raft a bit. Joanne was getting a bit claustrophobic, so this was kinda necessary. Let's extend this a bit, you know. Yeah, please. <laughs> the barrels I can reel in contain a good chunk of trash, so those were important to catch. I needed all of the plastic and wood to expand the raft, so... We saw our very first island ahead of us that we were drifting towards. <laughs> Like usual, Yuan was slightly annoyed that I managed to catch all of the trash from him. Oh, how did you get both of them? Oh. <laughs> Close advantage. <laughs> oh. <sighs> Unbelievable. I can't wait for the raft is big enough so I don't have to stay near you. Unbelievable. I can't wait for the raft is big enough so I don't have to stay near you. While me and Yuan were fighting for garbage, Akiza was moving towards the island to see what kind of resources she could grab before the raft would drift away. We didn't have a way to stop the raft, so... Oh, you want, you want, look at this. I can't see the plank. I miss... I hate you. <laughs> I... Oh my god, I'm... I can't. I'm quitting, I'm quitting, I'm leaving. <laughs> this game. I honestly thought I made a spear, but I accidentally made a second hammer instead. God damn it! I made a simple bed whenever any of us would starve to death since we didn't really have any food. I throw along a grill with a bed whenever someone feels like they want to make a fishing rod and fish. Do we need to make an anchor? No, I'm about to make a sail. Oh, okay. Finally hit an island, so I took the time to grab some stuff in the ocean. I also picked up some handy metal and copper that will be used for multiple recipes eventually. I decided to make a water purifier since drinking salt water didn't really quench my thirst. On day 2, we had some food cooking now since all of us were starving. Did someone just eat my beet? I don't know how, but the raft managed to get stuck on the island, so we took this time by gathering as much resources as we could. Bruce gave me a smacking kiss, so that was my time to leave. I made it back to the raft just in time since it was starting to move. Oh, it's guys, wouldn't change. It's Raft is going. I grabbed a package that gave us the blueprint for a receiver. The receiver will be a very important tool for navigating in the ocean. But we are nowhere near of making it. And like usual, I have to be a menace to my friends with my hook, because I was enjoying it. <laughs> Who was that? Oh, um, of course it's mine. <laughs> what? Unbelievable. <laughs> you only got to leave. Is the sleep just stuck here for you guys too? Yeah, uh, it's like on you. I don't know what the hell. It's not too much anything. Bruce couldn't give us a break at all. Ah, oh, sure, yeah. I couldn't really make out what to do with the blueprints. I guess you just throw them away as soon as you pick them up. Uh, it up here. Are they the antenna? And the just throw them away. Yep, throw them back in the ocean. I made one of these research tables, which will help us unlock the blueprints by using each of the resources in the table. The hunger was annoying to deal with since it would handicap our movement. Also, is there any food? Because I'm super hungry. We were really hungry and really desperate, so we were gonna try killing Bruce for meat. Ah oh, yes, there was some food in the box for me to eat for now. And while Bruce was chomping on the shark bait Ikisa had laid out, me and Joan went out in the ocean to gather all of the stuff from the ocean in the meantime. While I was farming in the ocean, Joan had killed Bruce, so then we would be able to farm without any interruption. Oh, he's almost dead. I got some really good hits oh, on him. him. Oh, you had to get the shark. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I was swimming pretty far out in the water, triggering my thalassophobia. But other than that, I got the decoration package from one of the barrels. Back at the raft, I made a few wet bricks and I placed them out so they would dry and we could use them to make our first smelter. In the midst of doing that, I spilled a whole cup of tea over my whole setup. What are you doing? I spilled f 
tea everywhere. Put this in the video as well. Holy sh**! My whole mouse mat is ruined! Day 3 quickly came around the corner, like my hunger. And I was so hungry and I was patiently waiting for the shark meat to cook up, that Juwan kindly got for us. I made a few nets and I placed them out on the raft that will pick up the trash for us. Ah, I love automation. Akisa was putting up the smelter for us now so we could get some ingots made. We had arrived at an island and we got stuck on it oddly enough with the raft. I went up to the island to grab a bit of planks from the trees and I picked up the beautiful box on top. Bruce was slow and I killed him so we could get some meat and gather ocean loot in peace. I was gonna cook my shark meat, but the Kisa was cooking up a helpless catfish. He'll be done in a second. While me and Joan was diving for some resources, the Kisa was learning a lot of recipes for us, like the metal spear and an upgraded hook. The Kisa wanted us to muster up as much scrap and clay as possible, so we could have more than one smelter. Joan had trust issues with me like usual. All I really wanted was to cook the shark meat. Or did I? <laughs> what are you cooking, everyone? Fish. Wait, did you take it? No. Oh. Okay, good. I even crafted up a scrap hook for myself, which has more durability and is capable of gathering stuff up faster. The keys had placed out the storage box now, so we could store some of the random shit we had on us. So please give me all of your sand and metals. On day four, Akisa had to explain to us about the bird's nest and why they're so important. Now, if you make one part of the raft that just goes straight out in one direction for a little bit, like maybe by 10 blocks, we can put down the, um, if we have, if we have a shell, you can make a bird nest and put it out there and then start hunting the bird. I spotted another island 12 o'clock from us, but I could only see it if I looked at it from a weird angle. I helped Joe and extend the raft a bit so he could put up the bird's nest. We didn't have any sort of anchor yet, so Akisa wanted me to angle the sail so we would get stuck on the island. Try and angle the sail so it's against the... I had absolutely no clue how thing. to do that. Wait, how do you angle it? Grab it and angle it. Hold to rotate. I was so thankful for my companions. They always provide me with some fresh cooked food. Oh, thank you for all the food. Oh, jeez. Oh my god. It's okay, I'll cook more. Oh yeah, potato and beet. Uh, great, it'll <laughs> fill me up for like... 10 seconds. <laughs> we all were really efficient and I farmed everything from the ocean bed. And on my way back, Joa notified me that the shark was back. Shark is back, you actually. Fancy it is back, oh my god. It's back? Yeah, it's swimming towards you right now. Oh, <laughs> There was finally some birds in the nest, but my wooden no. stick was awful. I put up a few more nets and I rotated a few of them since I didn't realize it before. I don't know if it does any difference, but whatever. Akisa managed to kill one of the seagulls, so we got our hands on some KFC and feathers. Akisa was gonna explain to us our next step. Yeah, you gotta build up the raft enough to be able to actually mic the device to track down the story islands. Yeah. If you open your notebook, which will be T, you are a forward scout. Earth your raft is your, is your front home, and your hook is your front. There's, you'll have a little picture that to remind you of what you lost. So basically, we cannot progress any further until the raft is somewhat bigger. The antenna and receiver won't function unless the raft is a decent size. On day 5, I spotted an island nearby, but the Kisa didn't want to go there since we had so much metal to cook down, and we were in severe need of plastic and such. As I was lagging, our very first gigantic island spawned on the horizon. Oh, that's a big island. So in the meantime, Akiza put down a proper water purifier, so we're starting to get somewhere for sure. Hey okay, guys, we have a water purifier now. Finally, we had an anchor, so all we have to do is poke a hole in the raft and then place it down. Yuan made a huge discovery that we were out of food like usual, since everyone eats like we have a buffet here. Do you have spare food still? I think we had a box for that. Yeah, here probably. It's empty, great. <laughs> so the main objective here was to grab everything possible from the island. Akisa was fighting off a piggy, but baited him over to me while I was chopping down a tree. Ouch! Well, since Akisa baited the piggy over here, I killed it and I claimed its head. No, no, I'm gonna eat the pig head! Who has There's the pig head? A, that's... I don't have anything. Mike. What is a deer here? Uh, Jumping back? I'm so confused. Don't want the shirt, kid. Me and Akisa went out deeper into the island looking for stuff. 
and fighting a pig almost had me killed. Ow! Oh no, what? I survived with that? Oh, I have a sliver of health left. Jesus. Uh, if we want to kill this creature, we're... Yeah, we're gonna need a bow. I was incredibly confused where the raft was, so I got killed by I a died. creature because of that. Akisa found me, so she carried me back to the raft. I made myself a bow this time so I could destroy that bird's life. Obviously, I had to make a few arrows as well. It was day six, and that means it's time for payback. I was now ready for the bird. I just had to wait for it to get close to me so I could try shooting it. Joan brought a bacon Ouch. close to me that almost had me killed again. Yeah, the bird needs to die. He really needs to die. I timed my arrow and I hit him, but he seemed like he was in distress and did some spins in the air. Hitting the bird was very difficult at times since I just suck at this. Joan came over to assist me with this annoying piece of sh KFC. We both missed pretty hard and Joan got touched by a small little I'm rock. That was kind of funny to see. Oh, oh that sounded like it hurt. I gotta say, I am very impressed by Joan's positivity for this. I have two more arrows and then I can't shoot anymore. So nice. Then it's all up to you, Joan. Don't worry, goddamn god skill. We finally killed it and it gave us a bit of feathers, drumsticks and a head trophy. In all of these big islands, there will be a shop where we can trade in stuff for resources and such. But we weren't anywhere near of doing that yet, so... I went into the ocean to pillage all of this stuff. I almost drowned when doing that, so I headed back to the raft to drop these things off. I was a very thirsty boy, so I drank everything we had in the purifier. At least it's easy to fill up. While I was zoning out, I was sorting out the box and trying to think with my singular brain cell. I came to the conclusion after a while that we had zero wood and I couldn't make an axe to chop down the trees on the island for it. Joan came over with some supplies, especially wood, thankfully. After a bit of struggle, the shark was finally beaten easily again. Well, I wasn't able to go down to the ocean floor and grab everything since we didn't have enough stuff for a hook, so Joan had to gather it alone. On day 7 of us just chilling, I was cooking up some food and suddenly Jorn was discovering some interesting poisonous fish. What is that? What is that? What is that? What is that? What? I got poisoned by something? I'm, oh my oh, god. Oh, it's a puffer fish. <laughs> oh my heart. God damn it. Oh my god. I jumped. I made myself a water bottle because I'm tired of drinking from a water cup. I was looking through the recipes and I had difficulties deciding what we needed. There was a juicy metal pick there though. We were literally just waiting for Akisa to get back to us, so we harvested up everything from the island and then headed off. While we were peacefully sailing, I finally made a metal spear. Enough is enough with the spaghetti stick. Oh, look at this, one! I'm gonna get the barrel and this. Oh, oh. yeah, look at this big loot. <laughs> God damn it. Thing. Goblin. Is there something we need to work on getting, Akisa? Like, do we need a metal for something? So we're gonna need a battery, three antennas. Wait, wait, you need a battery and three antennas? Three antennas, a battery, and a receiver. Well, you get one antenna to start with, because making this shit is kinda expensive. Okay, will Akisa be our uh, captain then? No, please. Yay, I am the captain now. Well, you better be good, otherwise we'll mutiny. On day 8, we came close to an island, but we weren't gonna stop here. But as soon as I killed Bruce, we decided to harvest everything in the water either way. <laughs> this sucks! I wonder you like this because of what I'm holding. Is that a fish? Oh my... Ugh. I'm not even hungry. It's, you freaking loot hogging, food hogging. Oh my god, I shake my head. While we were sailing, Johan freaked out that he spotted a whale. And that's the first one we've ever seen. <gasps> Oh, that's a whale. That's a freaking whale. Oh, that's so big. I want to jump down in water. Oh my god, he's making some noise. Ouch. Bruh, if I fell in and that whale was there, I would have freaking panicked. Wow, wow. Using up your freaking charge on your hook for to get something that's going to get to us either way. Oh my god. Loot hungry goblin, I swear. <laughs> Loot hungry goblin. <laughs> I crafted the receiver now, but our second floor wasn't really done yet, so I couldn't place it down. Can I place it here, where I'm standing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So we Swedes, me and Johan at least, we are not used to port side and starboard, and Akisa was trying to teach us that. Not gonna lie, I'm too stupid to remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Left is the port side, and right is starboard. What was left again? I already forgot. Port. 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 And starboard is right. right. I'm never gonna remember that. I'm telling you right now. <laughs> On day 9, we were drifting along nicely towards nowhere, but I took this precious time in expanding the raft a bit. I was quite annoyed that people who drank water from the purifier didn't fill it up after it was used. This was a very common problem for us at least. Oh, you have to fill it? Honestly, having a lot of nets would be nice. It was too bad we didn't have enough stuff to make more to pick up everything from the ocean. So Akisa wanted to be the captain and explain what our next objective was. We're staying out on the sea for a while. Okay. <laughs> We've got enough stuff to process already, and we need to focus on raft expansion and getting to the first area. So we all went upstairs to look at where our first coordinates are, because that's where we're heading for our first destination in the game. Forty yep, miles. We are one thousand five hundred meters away. And now that we have more space, Johan, you're going to be the farmer. Oh hell yeah. While we were sailing towards the first destination, it was gonna take a while, so I didn't have too much to do other than extending the raft. On day 10, the raft was finally taking a shape, we were gonna try making it look like an actual ship. Agisa had turned the whole raft towards the coordinates we were heading to, but I also noticed that the nets couldn't grab any more trash from the sea. We had then finally arrived at our first destination to the story of this godforsaken world. So then we just had to search all around the building for story notes and resources. So as soon as we reached the oil rig, we found a note from a man called Cuckoo talking about three people with bird code names. They were heading for a place called Celine and that the other facilities were under the water. And that one of them started to become less talkative than the other two people. It was later revealed that the guy named Sparrow had taken their only boat and left the other two stranded on the oil rig for weeks. Cuckoo and Owl had no idea why Sparrow was so secretive. The only information they had was that a team at Celine's were working on a prototype of some kind. Owl was yelling up in the tower about the distress call from the radio, so I guess that's where we should go up to. There was a lot of parkour involved with this, but it was kind of fun, honestly. The group was able to find a blueprint for a headlamp in one of the rooms, which will come very handy. We found Owl's note, revealing to us that the distress call was hinting to us about the number of different locations and events that has taken place in the world. So according to Cuckoo, he believes that Sparrow had a very good reason for leaving them behind, while Owl is thinking the opposite, and that he betrayed them. Cuckoo still had faith that he made it to Celine's and finished making the reactor for all of us to save the world. We found our very first human named Tala in the tower and got our next location and a blueprint for the recycler. So basically Tala is a playable character and it's not really clear how she ended up here in this tower. So on day 11 we got the coordinates for our next destination. Me and Johan made fun out of Akisa's pronunciation since Raft is made by Swedish developers. If you hit T, it'll now open your notebook, and you'll see we have the radio tower followed by a number, and Vasaganta, oh. which is going to be our next coordinates to head to. Vasa but you do want to make sure... <laughs> Wait, can you say it again, Akisa? <laughs> nope, nope, absolutely not. <laughs> you had way too many fun with that. Uh, way too Wait, much what did you say? I will not be saying. Yeah. Please say it again. <laughs> I said Vasaganta. <laughs> 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 you can definitely tell it's a Swedish game you're on. <laughs> yeah, I do. All right, Vos. the proper Swedes. How do you say it? Vossagossa. Oh my yeah. god. Akisa put down our new coordinates and then we were ready to sail. After a bit of reading, I made a recycler that will process raw materials into trash cubes we can use as currency. While trying to finish up the flooring of the raft, we came across another decently sized island to stop at. So we were basically just preparing everything we would need for this entire expedition. We are gonna need to get shovels and the trash cubes for this. After a bit of preparation, we were ready to go into the island and there was a lot to explore and I was so excited for this, like everyone else. By day 12, I was up at this shop and buying some simple fish bait. With the fish bait, you can get a special fish that will increase the reputation with the shop, 
it gives you access to tier 2 and tier 3 recipes. <clears throat> Let's be real. How much am I honestly gonna fish when I got my two slaves with me? <laughs> While Akisa and Johan were dealing with the bird, I did my usual round of chopping up some trees instead. Oh, red berries. Nice. No, they're really good ingredients, so still don't eat them, but... We wanted to get an animal, but in order to do that, we would need a net to capture it. And we didn't really have any, so... Yeah. Bruce was literally waiting for us to get on the raft just to harass us, but Johan cleanly killed him off. Oh, we got him. Nice. I made a net launcher to capture those animals. But I realized something odd about it. Oh my god, bro. I didn't have any ammo for it, so I couldn't really use it. I felt like a complete idiot. I honestly don't know why we don't have the ammo for it. I guess we haven't discovered the ammo yet. Akiza told me about the fish that is in the water. It's a very specific one, so I went looking for it in the water. But I didn't spot any of those special fish. <laughs> I'm not even sure what I was even looking for, to be honest. At the end of the day, Akisa was cooking up our first proper meal of the journey. I think we all were getting tired of bears and cooked fish diets. On day 13, I went up to the shop to grab a bit of more bait for you one so we could do some fishing, because it was out of things to do. We ran into a problem when I wanted to make a scrap hook. We were completely out of metal ingots. Wait, we don't have any more metal? Oh, we're completely out of metal. But now, it was time to leave this island and continue on our journey. I think we stayed here for long enough. Also, we had some uncooked metal on the forge, we just didn't have any wood until Yuan came back with that. So I'm not really sure if Yuan paid attention last time, but we had to explain to him how to cook up his first proper meal. Oh, I hear something bubbling here. Doesn't that sound glorious? How do you actually, like, use the cook? So you have to basically put the ingredients on the sides. Yeah, okay. and you once it's done, you need to make a clay bowl to pick up the soup. And then you eat both play the clay bowl and the soup, just so you know. What? Uh, okay. Because you don't get So we bowl. put Johan in charge of the garden. He put up a crop lot for his trees so he would be able to get some growing coconut trees. <laughs> yeah, uh, now you're going to plant the tree right in the center and then you're going to water it. While we were drifting, my eyes spotted the very next area we were heading towards. But it wasn't really an island. Is that the island we're going for? Yeah, it is. It's not an island though. I had to do some cooking in preparation, since this could prove to take a while, honestly. It seemed to be somewhat of a cruise liner that got shipwrecked a very long time ago, so we are gonna have to go and clear every level in the ship. You might wanna- somebody might wanna make a battery and research it on the table and then make a headlamp, otherwise it's gonna be dark as heck in there. Okay, there we go. I got everything made. You want to see this? Are you jealous? Yes. What level is this? <laughs> wait, 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 you wanna look at this? <laughs> Do you see this? Bruh. Oh, can you have multiple? <laughs> I've been saving. Akisa wanted us to go search outside the cruise liner for mechanical parts, since that is one of the things we are looking for for the quest objective. I picked up some scrap while looking for mechanical parts, but I couldn't see any. Johan managed to find two mechanical parts, but I couldn't still see any. Oh, I found a mechanical part. I got the mechanical part in the pool. On day 14, we were finally ready to go into the dark cruise liner. Yeah, you go, you go. You go first. I don't like the sound. Nah. I activated the switch and we picked up our first note. What oh, was a note? I heard from the captain. We're heading for one of the high rises down south. I can only hope you come to your senses and follow us. You knew the city was a failure, Ruben. Have to be so stubborn. Me, my first time playing this, blissfully unaware of any sort of accent in this game. Mike, after two seconds of being here, they're all Swedes, what the f <laughs> Further into the ship, Johan and Akisa came across the creature. <laughs> what the hell is Sorry, this? You're gonna have this to... a oh my god. Sorry, Mike, you're gonna have Christ von Bolt Cutter. Yeah, I think it's further down. Managed to find the red key in the bathroom, and I continued being a loot goblin. The red key, however, was for the room furthest down the hallway. Ruben, the yacht is ill-prepared for this journey. We'll have left space for a dance floor, but no space for supplies. The supplies? sure found their way to the bar. As a millet, I saw a large rat last night. Unnervingly large. 
I tried telling the crew we obviously have an infestation among the lockdown supplies. They laughed at me. I miss you, Ruben. With the bolt cutter I picked up, I was able to get the locker unlocked. There was also a blue key in there for the next door ahead. Does it again? He will be reprimanded. The crew doesn't listen to orders. I'm shocked by their undisciplined nature. Somehow they believe rank and prestige disappeared with solid land. No, they will not be allowed to mingle among my esteemed guests, and they will certainly not be allowed further rations. They should be grateful. I am the only reason they are alive. <laughs> now, Olaf here is a deranged murderer who openly promises death and suffering for nearly everyone around him. As we got upstairs, Juan found another note from Olaf. So basically, Olaf talks about the crew being completely incompetent with his crazy plans and ideals. The crew was talking about these big rats that had eaten half of their supplies in a matter of weeks. But Olaf promised them increased rations if they brought one of these lurkers alive. But the food shortage still needed to be handled by discussing about which staff member is the most suitable as a sacrifice for the rats. Basically, Olaf wants to kill the people for the rats and train them. He was also talking about mutations with rats and something about a caravan town. I managed to pick up a green key from Captain's quarters, so I went further up to pick up the lighter, which is for a bomb. Apparently the crew was planning a mutiny against Olaf, and he didn't take it well and wanted to use the lurkers against humans. And then suddenly the ship crashed. Further up the boat, there was a door that required the bomb for me to open it, so I went back down again to the workshop to craft the bomb and a car jack. Huh. Mike Wazowski. Oh, come on. I, I'm strong enough to push that. We didn't need that. Unbelievable. What? Why do I have a rainbow t shirt? Oh my god, okay. I lost half my health. Nice. Really? Oh, blueprint engine. Nice. Yeah, we got a blueprint for an engine and a steering wheel. So, next one is Balboa Island, right? Yep, okay. Balboa Island. On day 15, Joan was gonna teach me how to set up the coordinates since I couldn't remember exactly how to do that. Turn on. Then use this thing to press to the... Do you have the coordinates? Yeah, well, isn't it the number? 4866? Yeah. yeah, then you use this lever to switch between and then use the one to decrease or increase. Now and now it's behind... It's two islands apparently. I played a bit of Raft a long time ago, but I just can't remember everything since I only have a singular brain cell. We now finally had a steering wheel to easily maneuver the Raft. And we now have a steering wheel, boys. But that alone won't be enough to head to Balboa Island. We need way more stuff. We are not ready to go to Balboa yet. Nah, you want that's your fault. I'm gonna head us towards a big island so that we can get resources. You want, you want, do you know what we need? We need more food. Can you cook us yeah. some food? I'm gonna do that when I'm. We need more metal. We need more. We need more boat. We need more. We need engines. Yeah, there was a lot of things we actually needed, so I can understand the reason why we didn't go to Balboa yet. Akisa had a good plan for the raft design, and that was to turn it into shape of a ship and not a floating square. So I got started with building, of course. Unfortunately, we didn't have any great way of stopping Bruce from harassing the raft. Not until we can fortify the raft with metal. It's okay. get the shark! Oh. I'll just rebuild back there. Then it goes back to expanding the boat a bit. I wanted to extend these corners here. I didn't have too much to do since we were drifting mindlessly into the deep blue sea. We needed a lot of resources. Day 16. I was still building the raft. Well, at least attempting it with the Kisa's guidance. Oh. Yeah, and like I said, the floors need to be upgraded to the better floors. The solid ones? Yeah. How do you upgrade though? Yes. Yeah, you go to the upgrade bottom at the bottom, uh, at the bottom, that hammer with the plus, then you go over to replace with solid wood. Ah, there we go, okay. 
everyone wanted to sleep since it was night, but the game clearly told us it was morning. You can't fall asleep during the daytime. <laughs> Shaking my hand. We quickly found up a nearby random island so I can continue on building the boat. Or like what a friend once said, bout. Akisa has played this game before and she told me that we weren't even through the first chapter. There are three chapters in total. We are not through the first chapter. LOL, really? I didn't want to have to deal with the night anymore, so every good slave will have to go to bed. Bright and early into day 17, while I was swimming around collecting loot, I accidentally drank seawater without realizing it, almost ending it there for me. Oh wait, what did I just drink? Did I just drink salt water? Oh my god. Making the floor fortification would be quite expensive since it would need a quintillion of metal and nails. And me and Akisa cleared the island while Johan was AFK and eating at buffet. On day 18, Johan finally came back after being gone for multiple in-game days. Hello. Ah, welcome, Baron Von Bliet. So I'll just, I'll just fix the floors. Is that better, Akisa? I'll just focus on floors instead for now. Good, good talk. You do you remember when you used to say that? You could talk. You from yeah. You got it from him. You. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> I got it from you one. Nothing triggers me more than Mike saying "good talk" to me because my brain's <laughs> loading trying to understand the words that he just threw at me at a billion yeah. miles per hour. <laughs> <laughs> good work, Mike. Good work. One last thing we need to do is get all of the metal from the ocean. We need the engines badly. I found my first puffer fish as well. The explosive goo is what we need in order to craft up the nets for capturing the animals. Uh, it's from the pufferfish. Oh, I'm, I need to research it? Okay. Right. Yeah, that one needs to be researched next. On day 19, I noticed how good the solid wood actually looked. We were definitely getting somewhere with the boat now. But I think it's about time to leave. All of these islands are crucial to visit right now since we're lacking on literally everything. Raise the anchor, you want? Okay, I'll, I'll rate how do this. And Juan was getting quite dizzy from all of the spinning. Uh, yeah, I don't know how that shit works. I'm just getting dizzy, spinning around like a Beyblade. <laughs> Can you stop spinning? How? Oh my god. I'm turning around. <laughs> what do you want? Jesus Christ. It's so. Oh, I see a trespasser coming aboard. No, stop her. I don't know, it's a she. True, true, true. You're right there. What? Why are you? Sh why are you shooting? You one? <laughs> you see the arrow go through his knee? No, he was stuck oh, in his okay. knee. <laughs> okay, reinforcing the floors has started. This was gonna be quite expensive, especially to cover all of the outer layers. That's all we really need to stop Bruce from damaging the boat. John has been a very good slave. He was fat with wood. All of that is for the boat. Okay, I have a lot of wood. Do you want wood, Mike? Yes, all of it. And um, plastic. All of it. More, more! Throw me more! That's it. Wow, jeez, you had so much on you! Oh my god! We all know that I would never get all of this wood if this was recorded off camera. On day 20, the farming and building still continued. Jonas has told me that this island was thick with metal and copper, so I assisted him with that since we need a lot of it. I got back to the boat, and I discovered that the Kisa had put up a McDonald's milkshake machine. I made Johan a set of tools to get him back in the game of farming. Visiting all of these islands put a lot of stress on our minds and tools. We all went to bed, since we didn't really want to deal with the dark night. So on day 21, we stumbled across more islands, but I didn't do anything special here other than just killing Bruce, and upgrading the floor. Why is there a boot next to my farming? Oh yeah, I saw that too. I was like, what? What is that? It's so you can plant a flower. <laughs> <laughs> While me and Akisa were sorting out resources, Yuan went for an island. I'm going towards the island, Mokas. But we forgot one important thing when Yuan went for the island. We didn't drop the anchor. Wait, are we moving from the island? Do we have Wait. a drop anchor? Oh my god. Guys, <laughs> come back. I was like, why are we yeah. still getting barrels? Yeah, yeah, no one ever dropped anchor. Oh. It's okay. We'll be fine, oh. Johan. Don't worry, we're not that far away. I can't barely see you anymore. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. 
I know. It's we can all blame Akisa. We we'll blame. Yeah, her. yeah. Okay, good. Sounds good. Got them into Akisa. You're the captain. You're supposed to drop the anchor. You're right. I got too busy cooking. I do apologize. <laughs> captain and chef. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are we then? <laughs> we are fish bait, I guess. I don't Oop, know. Another day, another day of drifting mindlessly until the boat was constructed a bit more. But yeah, I was counting how many reinforced floors we would need. We were almost done with that, at least. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Joan was mortified when a bird was eating a small little flower. You want something eating to your plant? <laughs> He's eating your plan! <laughs> wow, he didn't even care. He has committed to that shit. What the hell? <laughs> we saw our first sea turtle swimming in the ocean, and we were curious if we could kill them or not for some food. I guess not. John was a bit confused about what kind of design ID we were gonna go for, but it seemed like we all had a similar vision for it. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're just gonna change the steering and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah we're just gonna change the orientation to be an actual, yeah. actual boat-wise when we need less materials. Hmm, interesting. So Juan ran into an issue with his game where he got stuck in the inventory. I think my game bugged. I'm permanently in the box and I can't do anything. And then the keys I got stuck in the box trying to help you one. Oh, I'm stuck all... in there now. What if I drag something from there? Oh, no, there no, we no, go. Again. Oh, no, I'm stuck. Okay, this. Someone <laughs> removed this f chest. <laughs> the only solution we had was that someone just had to reconnect. On day 23, I was just melting a lot of resources while everyone was having a lot of issues with the game. But I feel like we were nearing it. We were getting closer and closer in order to make our engines. I say engines as plural since we need more than one in order to reach our next destination. Sometimes it's very hard to tell the difference between a smoothie mixer or a bruise jumping on the flooring. <laughs> well, at least the ship was done with the reinforcements, so now we can work on other things. After all of these days just farming, we might have enough metal and copper for engines. On day 24, I was melting up a lot of sand for glass so we could get some more smoothies going. So this is kind of interesting though. With every smoothie or cooked meal you eat, you eat the dishware as well. It will definitely add a lot of texture to our drinks and meals. We drifted off to the next island to quickly join of its switches for our boat. <laughs> like usual, Yuan seems to have some sort of trust issues with us. Oh my god, who's going into the chest all the time? <laughs> that is not me, I'm just staring. <laughs> Wait, is no one in the box? Wait, that was weird. I make my own boxes. <laughs> you know how you can you don't have to be connected to the rafts right what if i just do that with my own little raft behind <laughs> oh i hope the shark gets you <laughs> i decided to make a few nets for the gun since we were ready to get our first animal suddenly something really bad happened i got stuck in the inventory of a box which prevented me from doing absolutely anything it's really bad if I get stuck in my inventory since I can't save the world then. Uh-oh. I'm stuck now. Oh no. How do you get out of this? Oh my god. I got out. Oh. Yep. And now I'm stuck in it. <laughs> oh my god. Why do we have so much problems with this? I think it's because I think it's registering one of us is still in the box when the, somebody else goes in the box. Even though they're not really in the box. On day 25, we were looking for a clocker, but I saw a llama instead, so I captured it, and I named it Gary. Johan really liked Gary. I could tell by the cheerful excitement of his voice. <laughs> Is that a llama? Oh, <laughs> god. That looks so silly. I brought Gary back to the boat to keep him safe, but we still didn't have a clocker yet. I guess it was also scaring me a bit that Gary wasn't in his pants since she couldn't see him. Neither me or Yuan could confirm since we were out looking for a clucker. Oh wait, where'd you put the llama? It's in the, the thingy. Something feels really off. I dropped him in there. Like in the fence area, right? Yeah, I don't see him though. We found a goat on the top of the island that I captured. Boop. Yuan wanted me to pick up a crate, but that turned out to be a big mistake real fast. Can you carry this one, Yuan? Yeah. Carry this one. Where is it? What? Oh! No! Wait, where did it go? Here he is. Um, this is weird. Oh! Okay, I can't let him go. 
Gary was still inside his pen, so we were all good. It's just a game issue for Kisa, I think. Also, Mike, can you turn this way? I just, I have to share something with you, and I need you to turn around and look at me to do that. No. I'm about to, I'm about to post a picture of what's currently going on. Oh, oh, oh no! <laughs> really? That's on my screen um, right now? Mike? I what think are you doing? Illegal. Don't unhand that llama, will you? Joan had a name idea for the goat since our brains were kind of scrambled after what we witnessed from before. I don't know. So let's name it Betsy. Memory of episode. Either way, I went to the deep sea gathering up the rest of the metal and I got away with almost 20. That was a really good run. I was cleaning up the ocean of all the trash for Bruce, but he was being very ungrateful for that. On day 26, we were completely stuck on the island and we had problems getting out of this beach with the boat. We had no paddle and we were continuously getting dizzy for no reason. You won, uh, do you have the paddle thingy? <laughs> I don't have the freaking paddle. Oh my god. I'm getting so dizzy. Oh my god. On day 27, I was trying to shear the animal since we needed the fur for making backpacks eventually. Jorn was confused and didn't think we had a single amount of dirt and was talking about it all of the time. Oh well. Uh, we have dirt. No, we don't. Oh, we do. Okay, I'm blind. I'm blind. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I s it was about time to make the engines. Joan wanted that Swedish Volvo engine ASAP. Volvo engine. Volvo engine. Okay, so I need to make... How many engines do you want, Kisa? Uh, we're going to need four. Okay, so four circuit boards. It took a lot of time and effort for this, but we finally had enough resources for the four engines. I was lacking a bit of wood, but that's so easy to get. Akisa opened up the base here so we could place the engines there. So here, let me show the controls. So right now, there's a directional lever. So this one we're going to want forward, and we're going to want this one also in the forward position so that they'll both go that way. Okay. You need to put planks in them, and then it's this lever that activates the engine. There we go. I made the rest of the engines. I placed one down, but I couldn't place the other one down yet. I was lacking out on a bit of wood here for the flooring, but Juan was gonna put some wood in the box, but then suddenly... I'm stuck in the box now! Yeah, I should have warned you, maybe. <laughs> Alright, Johan, so you're trying to take one for the team. Fine, I got out, thank you. You're welcome. And there we go, now we have all of the four engines to progress to the next island. But we had to get some of these nets moving now, since we were gonna change the orientation of the boat. So now we're not gonna go sideways. Now the boat was basically ready to travel to the next story island, but we were having issues with the game. Johan had over a thousand ping. Okay, I got a massive lag there. What do you say, you? I have 1.3k ping right now. Oh well, we decided to explore an island because we were in dire need of wood. On day 28, we were still on the island and Johan had to find a clucker, so I ran out to him. Ah, I don't wanna waste a <laughs> shot. Oh god. I missed. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh well, I only had one try to try to capture that clucker, but I had to run back to the boat to make a new net. And like usual, this box issue was very problematic for us, but funny. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> Are you good now, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, if I get stuck in there, I don't know what to do. Like, can I save the game then? I have to save the game. Somehow. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing, Joan? Oh, back to all death ring. <laughs> You're back. Joan decided to reconnect, but for some odd reason, when Joan reconnected, he was under the island. I'm under the island? What? Where are you? What? Um... <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing under the island, you are? I don't know. I, I guess How? just swim out to sea, you should be able to pop out How of it. Are you under the island? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, perfect. So we went diving looking for pufferfish since we didn't have an explosive powder left for making the net. And we really needed that clucker. The clucker will drop an egg from time to time, which are used to make the healing paste. Day 29, I was back at the boat making a new set of weapons and the net. Then I had to head back to the island to catch that clucker. After walking around confused for a bit on the island, I spotted the clucker and I captured it finally. 
You made it back with mother. Hello. Now, we were finally off to the next story island with our new Volvo engines. All right, turn on the engines. Yikes, I guess that told us we put in the wrong coordinates, but the recording doesn't oh, lie. Did, did you guys put in the right coordinates? I haven't touched it yet. We're at the we're at the radio tower again. And you guys are the ones that remember, Johan, you showed him the tutorial on how to enter the We took yeah. 4866. Now you put in 4153, which is the radio tower. So this is kinda odd, but let's go back to see what I actually typed in. I was pretty sure I pressed the right chords. Do you have the coordinates? Yeah, well, isn't it the number? 4866? Yeah. Is it? So what I think really happened is when Akiza moved the instruments, the coordinates reset somehow. Well, since we were back at the old area again, we decided to harvest up all of the resources because they had respawned by now, and then head out to the new right coordinates. We have now finally arrived at our next story island, Man, this island was massive since my game froze for a while when generating the world. Getting here without engines is impossible, and that's why it took us so many days to even get to this point. But we were gonna need a lot of water and food for exploring the whole island because it's massive and it would take us a very long time to clear up everything. It was now day 31, and Akisa had to cook up a lot of food for us, so I took the time by upgrading the floor while I was waiting. Finally, we had some backpacks that Akisa made for each one of us and healing salves and food. Oh, uh, there's, so there's a backpack for you, as well as two healing salves for emergency purposes. All right, and all now right. I'm out of the box, so now give it a few moments, then go in the box. I'm waiting, 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 <laughs> waiting, waiting. Go for it, okay. So on day 32, I was all prepared and I swam to shore with the Kisa. Joan was a real slow poke here. Come on, Johan. Further up the hill, there was a sign warning us of bear dance ahead. I was quite worried Morning. about it. Bears? There was a container up here that required five wild berries. Five wild... Is this like a trap for the bear? bear? Like a... Yeah, we need to find berries so that she'll come over here so we can go in her cave and take her stuff. Wait. Oh my god. Run. Further up the forest, we came to realize that we needed a sweeping net because there's gonna be a lot of bees oh, that we I'm can capture die. for honey. After we grabbed the stuff for the sweeping net, we went back up to assist the scared cat, Juan. But before we did that, he quickly skedaddled down to the beach. Yeah, I ain't going up there alone. After getting to the beehives, we had to take care of a bear nearby, but he didn't stand a chance against us. So the reason why we needed the bees is obviously because they make honey, but it will be later used for making the biofuel to power the engines instead of using the wood. Oh, we were lost and walking aimlessly in the forest until we came across the signpost. We were heading towards the ranger station out of all of the choices. Oh my god, there's a f bear behind us. Oh. <laughs> it was so silent, it didn't make any noise. Oh my god. A bit further up, there was a bit of acidic water that we had to carefully avoid. Wait, they disappear after you jump on them? Okay, Mike, be yep. careful. In the first house we ran into, we found the biofuel refiner for making the biofuel. So this machinery right here will process all of the honey and raw materials into biofuel. There was a wall of tools missing that we had to retrieve as well. We had a tower we had to climb and once we got up there I found the very first note. So it's basically about the guy who was put in charge of the reindeer station here with his sister Astrid. And their job was to handle the bear population and keep the real estate towers operational. It was supposed to be a new shift starting a few weeks back, but no replacements ever showed up. So a guy called Henry suggested that he started writing things down after Astrid disappeared. So I activated a switch and now one out of three relay stations were activated. So I guess we have to go and find the two other ones and activate them too. There were still a lot of bears lingering around. Bear? Sorry, I was not being bear aware. Wow. You were barely focusing. We came across more bees to capture as well, and while I was grabbing bees, I let Juan and Akisa deal with the bear. Akisa had found the next clue to this island, but we lost her in the woods. Oh, oh, I found something. Guys, come cliff. this way. Where's this way? Where is she? Uh, um. I don't see where she is, Juan. Juan, where? Yeah. 
I don't no, no. know. <laughs> oh my god, I'm going oh, to go over here. <clears throat> this way. Oh this my way, god, how? Why couldn't you just jump down for us? Oh, oh, it's a bike. I have no clue what the bike signifies, to be honest. Maybe a bear that can ride a bicycle? Yeah, who knows, honestly. The island has so much to it. We spent quite a long time running about in the forest and came across some notes on the ground. Oh, here's a note. Look. Betrayal. Father trusts the murderers. Another note. He would leave us behind. <laughs> we can't oh have that. Why does he sound so freaking creepy? Father has to make a decision. Uh, we bruh. Know it won't be me, so I will be spared. <laughs> I don't like this. The guilty lay restless. We must be punished if we are to rest. Not enough road for all of us. I am sorry, Errol. Got a light bulb. Okay. Oh. Give her the wild berries, Jan. Oh. Wait, I have to? And now we go into a cave? The next blueprint was for the machete. I was quite confused why the blueprint was telling us of a Swedish street. Machete! Österringen! Ooh. Oh my god, it said Österringen. Oh my god. A bit further up, I found Bruno's chainsaw in a locker that we needed previously at the ranger station. Oh god. We were helping each other by carrying stuff someone already held. <clears throat> I was laughing internally when doing this. <laughs> Does anybody else have mushrooms? I can carry the mushrooms. Okay. Meanwhile, my inventory is kind of clean. Everyone else's inventory is probably super full. Ah, oh, I have so much space in my inventory. I, I bet Mike is lying. He's like freaking sitting there with like barely anything holding. <laughs> I, I wasn't lying. I said the truth. I barely have anything in my inventory. Piece of shit. Okay, so we got the saw, so we got <laughs> one of the tools, and we got the light bulb. <laughs> so now we just need two more tools and they activate two more towers. Oh, God. Nice, nice. Hey, you Am I a donkey too, Mike? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> We came across some bees again before heading up the mountains where we got blocked by a bunch of vines. It was only breakable with machete a keys I found in a cave from before. Bruno had a couple of notes leading up to the tower where there was a guy waiting for us. Our first human. Uh, uh second, sorry. <laughs> so apparently Errol has been missing all night and Bruno tried asking Miranda or Henry but they didn't want to tell him anything. They were incredibly suspicious. Maybe they figured out there was only space for two of them on the boat, so Bruno decided to leave the children in charge of the relay stations while Bob was gonna take care of the bears. Not the wisest choice in my opinion, but you do you, Bruno. I also found a blueprint for a fuel tank. Finally, we are getting somewhere with the ship. Uh... Activate the tower, activate the tower. Also, Mike, look, we found your character. To be honest, it kinda Johnny. looks like Mike. Shut On day 34, we had to walk back up into the tunnel we went through. There was another relay station we walked past before. Now this one proved to be quite a task since we needed a way to lower the bridge. I gave Johan the challenge to figure it out. Oh wait, 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 wait. Oh. In the next station, we found a blueprint for the fuel pipes and Bruno's hammer. So now we had to head back to the ranger station to put up the light bulb and tools. If Astrid were still around, she would have known how to make the kids stop fighting. Bruno managed to find Astrid's wrench out by the clearing and has been calling her out on the radio, but to no avail. Joan wanted to navigate our way back to the ranger station. Yeah, guys, guess what you learn, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> and me and Akisa lost Joan suddenly and completely went the wrong way too. We got to the ranger station and we put the things away and got a new note for the caravan town, our next destination. I filled up the engines with wood and we were ready to head off. I used the bees I acquired to research the beehive so we could have some fresh honey. The next day I was expanding the raft a little bit to place out more nets so we could get more trash picked up. We have to hit all of the islands now again for every bit of resource, especially bees if those were possible finding. I was casually just farming up some trees while I got ambushed by a bear. Oh god, I'm hungry! No! I'm out of food! I'm gonna die from the bear. Yeah, I died. I came back for some revenge. 
and then I proceeded to clear the island. It was the shop on the island, and we managed to hit reputation level 3. We reached tier 3, boys! We reached tier 3. So that means we were gonna get way better items from the store. By the end of the night, I finished up the island by capturing some bees and I'm collecting some honeycombs. The next day, the nests were fully extended, so now we wouldn't miss any garbage coming our way. But despite that, we made it to Caravan Town now, which is the beginning of Chapter 2. So, we didn't want to deal with the night, so we all went to bed. Alright, Johan, are you ready to be the lootiest goblin that ever goblined? Oh because my god. Because this is the place to I loot goblin things, just so you know. I thought you'd never ask. Caravan Town is known for having a lot of random stuff hidden inside each trailer that we could loot. So this was gonna take a really long time to do. We had a puzzle as well to do. It was quite easy. All we have to do was make the pipes line up against each other and make the water go downwards into a well. We need more water, you want? And once the water well got filled, we got the zip line parts which we needed for our next step. A little bit further up, we found a battery charger part and a note. It was from Detto. It was something about that the villagers were getting sick and that Olaf was here ordering people around. Dr. Hendrik reminded Detto and Sanjay not to get close to the pigs, and Sanjay was apparently very scared of the situation. We found another note from some unknown narrator going on about how the raft town started in Indonesia and then in Jakarta due to the pressing rise of water. People started to band together in large rafts together raising concerns for the coastal authorities. They were pretty much just trying to make sanctuary towers of some sort in the southern hemisphere. Across the bridge in this caravan, I managed to spot Olaf's note and a workshop for the zipline parts that we would be able to make as soon as we had three pieces. The note from Olaf was basically that he was practicing a speech essentially lying to the people that he escaped a corrupt city because they wouldn't let regular working class folk on board. He went on about how the rich should share their luxuries, which is kinda weird when he had control over that big ship that was stranded. He tried to make the people riot against them and take over Tangaroa. Pressing on, it was now time to go down into the very deepest part of the ocean and follow a pipe leading somewhere. I got down into a container which had the key to the infirmary, another zipline part and a blueprint for a metal detector. Ooh. Then I managed to find another note from Detto that talks about the monster investigation related to Olaf again. So apparently Sanjay and Detto sneaked onto Olaf's boat at night in hopes of finding medicine for their mommy, but Olaf's boat were just filled with a lot of cages with big rats and a very large hyena. They found later a note about how ferocious they are and that Olaf was basically training them into his personal army. So if you can't tell by now, Olaf is the bad guy in this entire story. Akisa had made the metal detector. So then we followed the Kisa around looking for buried treasures when we ran into some sort of rocket that requires some explosive powder to activate. Right here. After we picked up the pile of trash, we quickly stop by our boat to pick up the explosive powder. And back at the rocket we go. Oh! No, not our Okay, I thought it was heading towards our boat. We went up on a small island nearby and got our last zipline part required. Now we have the zipline tool so we can get to these other locked areas. That was scary. There were a lot of aggressive pigs to take care of, meanwhile Akisa was searching through the caravan until she found a note. It was a note from Henrik specifically saying that the pigs were infected and were causing a lot of sickness in the town. He couldn't treat anyone in his condition and asked everyone to leave him here due to the infection. And this all started when Olaf arrived here. And while we were dealing with deceased pigs, Akisa got the keys to the Major's place. We ziplined over to the Major's caravan and I found the Major's hat and next to that a workshop that requires three pieces of battery chargers. In the Major's personal chest I found a blueprint for the engine controls and the location for our next story island. To wrap things up, we had to find three battery charge parts so we all split up looking for it. I picked up the last cable we needed and I got the blueprint for the battery charger. Ooh. So, instead of heading to our next area, we decided to drift in the ocean to collect some more wood and build a bit. Day 40, we were still drifting in the endless ocean. 
A kiss had put down a biofuel tank and hooked it up to the engine so they would grab the biofuel as soon as they were empty. Way more convenient than manually feeding the engine's fuel. We quickly stopped by an island and we got our hands on our first titanium ores we needed. They are super important for making our battery charger. We used one of the titanium bars to unlock some recipes, but we noticed we needed four titanium ingots to craft the battery charger. Yikes. And by end of the night, I went around the boat to do a quick update on how far we made it. We went through the chapter one, and this is basically how much we have built. We have the crop lots, obviously, for the trees. And then we have the scarecrow, the beehives, the beds, the forges. Here's a trash compactor. The research table we don't have everything here's the storage area water purifier trash bin here's the engines now with pipes for uh, the biofuel tanks it's still in const heavy construction here we still have to work on a second floor there's a lot we have to do the next day, Johan was having some serious issues connecting to the server. We spent like a good 10 minutes trying to figure out what was going on. Trying to connect the host to... Oh, I'm in. I'm dead. What the f***? Oh, great. He's floating away! Oh, nice. Not to bore you guys, but we spent a whole day 41 just drifting, since Johan had connection issues. We didn't want to do anything major except just build. On day 42, Akis explained to Yuan how to make the biofuel. Since Yuan was our gardener, he has to make the biofuel as well. Um, but basically, your honey plus food will be processed into biofuel. Like usual, I was quite enjoying Yuan's suffering with his super high ping. Okay, but 3000 ping. Oh my god, bro. <laughs> oh my god, Yuan. Uh, okay, I'm gonna click plant here. Let's see how long it takes. Now it. Okay, bro. That was like. <laughs> Was it instant? No, that was not instant, that was... Johan didn't want to do any treasure hunting with me, so I went alone. I got some titanium though, so now we're able to get the battery charger. Yeah, I was literally dying from this moment. This was quite enjoyable for me. Okay, I'm just gonna make a regular plastic hook, because I can't be f***ing up all the materials. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you? I'm swimming towards the island. No, get back on the boat, we're going. <laughs> In the oh my god. <laughs> what did you want? I'm just gonna be a ship maid or some sh <laughs> I don't know. Why did you go over there? What are you gonna you do? Guys, oh, land ahoy. <laughs> But yeah, shot. yeah, we're not going, we're, we're just, we're literally metal detecting, get as much as scrap as we can from the water as quick as we can, and then like, leaving. <laughs> oh my god, I'm too slow. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> Dying over here. Oh, Let me out of the box, oh my god. Okay, I think I'm actually like stuck stuck now. <laughs> I'm really oh my god. <laughs> Mikey, I don't know. <laughs> die. <laughs> I don't know oh, what okay, now I'm free. That took like a minute. What the? F <laughs> oh my god, I'm losing hope. The next day, I stopped by an island to metal detect for some titanium. Akisa had to also show me around the base since she put a lot of stuff down when I wasn't aware. Uh, so these are our, these make biofuel. We put food in the top and then honey in a little jar on the side. And it'll slowly dri drip biofuel into there and then we can take that biofuel back to our engines, uh, to our fuel tanks. And, uh, those will power both the engines as well as the, um, the battery charger. Which, uh, we just slap a new battery in there, or rather a depleted battery and it'll charge it up. She was working on a switch for the engines, but we needed a lot of titanium still. Then I was casually farming the island and I got a toy and a canvas from the buried treasure. Oh, wow. Why did someone bury that? On day 44, Akiza was finally able to make the engine switch. It took a few days and a bunch of islands just to make that. She wanted to show me around how to line up the pipes for the engines since I don't really want to mess around with that stuff. We cleared up a pretty big deserty island, it had a lot of good sh** we needed. There was a shop here too, so I guess I spent our cubes to buy some fishing bait so we could get some coins, and a canteen recipe. 
I made myself a canteen now, so no more water bottle for me. The canteen can basically hold double the amount than the bottle. Next day, I kiss I put up a refrigerator for our food. Then I put up a viking horn to alert everyone when we spot an island. We wanted to gather and build the raft a bit because our next heading is Tangaroa. We wanted to be somewhat more prepared for it. And our ship. The next day, the construction of the second floor was still being worked on. We quickly stopped by some islands to gather up a lot of sh** like usual though. I also managed to find this tiki piece here, it was kinda cool. So for the next 10 days here, we honestly didn't do anything special, except repeating island after island. And I honestly didn't wanna bore you guys with this, so this will be fast forwarded. But yeah, it is day 59, and we're finally off towards Tangaroa, the next story island. But we were like 2000 meters away from it, so it's gonna take a while to get there. We had to re-explain to Juan how to make the biofuel, since like, it's his job. On day 60, I could finally see Tangaroa in the distance. It looked like it was a huge looking glass dome, even this far away. As we got closer, the more intimidating it started to look. This place looks like it would take a hot minute to clear and such. After we got super close to the dome, I had to start looking for an entrance, so we decided to circle around the dome until we saw some kind of opening. Prepare to drop anchor! Uh. So on day 61, we had prepared a picnic and then we went inside. Oh! Okay, I jumped on top of the shark. <laughs> it was at the entrance for some reason. Welcome uh. to Tangaroa. Thank you. Okay. It's important that we very thoroughly Ugh, roaches. Like, explore everything okay. because there's a lot of notes and there's like a lot of hidden areas. After Akiza's quick debrief, we went down a tunnel here that was leading down to the cafeteria. Whoa! Okay. What is that? The cafeteria was quite big and it had a lot of loot inside it. So obviously we started being loot goblins here. Inside the cafeteria, Akisa managed to find a note from Ruben. Apparently, the captain was pushing the engines to their absolute limit in order to outrun a fleet of rafts. But despite that, it will overheat the reactor. He tried sending a message to the captain, but he didn't care about it at all. After Ruben was done talking, I picked up a generator part for something. I spotted another generator part behind some iron bars, so I went down the tunnel to see if I could pick it up. I still didn't know what to use it for. Then we went into the storage room where there is apparently a crane game. The crane game! Oh, it's my favorite, Mike. Akisa managed to find the third generator part and as soon as I climbed this ladder here, I saw where the generator parts needed to go. So all Akisa was gonna do for us was to make a path so we could get to the other room which leads to the surface. But before that, Akisa wanted to get into secret room first to grab a lot of titanium ore. On day 62, the path was finally cleared and we could walk into the next room where we found a water pipe blueprint and another engines note from Ruben. The captain had basically totaled the engines and that the people were upset over the extreme rationing. So now they were at the mercy of the waves with those rafts on their tail. Ruben decided to seal up the reactor despite whatever the captain said. We walked into a locked room, but there was a ladder leading up to the surface. But as soon as I opened the hatch, it started to flood in water. But that locked door opened up somehow. So I'm guessing we couldn't go that way, but there was a plantation room to go into instead through the storage area. And up here, we managed to find another note from Ruben stating that there was a lot of screaming people due to the captain opening fire on incoming rafters, which led to a riot amongst the people. A small raft made its way to the entrance, but there was only a kid on board it. The kid wasn't really saying much, and due to the unexpected turns, Tangaroa is a lost cause, so it's about time to leave. The plantation room was a bit sparkly, but not too difficult at all to avoid. There was some strawberries and banana trees here to harvest as well. I found another note from a guy named Johan stating that the plantation was failing and he wasn't allowed to speak about it publicly. So they were basically on the verge of starvation by the end of the year. So while Johan was talking, we picked up three pieces of duct tape to use on an electrical box that opened up a new room. 
R. Johan, not the other one, uh, found another note from Ruben saying that it's all chaotic up there with the guards. The rafters who made it let loose some of those humanoid rats and that they strapped tasers on some butler bots? But despite that, they were doing everything in their power to get out of here. After walking in a very long tunnel, we finally made it to the surface where there was another note. Apparently, the kid Ruben was talking about was dead though, and that they were trying to gather up more survivors to leave this area for a sanctuary called Utopia. We quickly found out that the robots were a tad bit aggressive who just wanted to greet us in their sparky way. Okay, it attacks. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> oh but when you kill the bots, they will drop key cards for unlocking the apartment doors. Me and Johan decided to go and clear a building together, while Akisa wanted to do it alone. There are also these vending machine tokens scattered all over the town, which can be used to trade in for items. Washing machine token. Vending machine token. We did a bit of parkour also, but Johan fell and he almost died. Hello. <laughs> oh, hello! Hi. There's a robot as well. Did I'm gonna die to a robot. I hate my life. <laughs> yeah, he hurt me. Oh, I, j I landed on him and got taste. <laughs> Alright, Johan, you are taking notes, okay? What tower did you and Mike go into? Akisa told Johan to take notes of the buildings we went into, since it has to do with some sort of a clue. I can take a look. Give me a second. I'll, I'll, I'll take a look. I don't know which house it is. It doesn't say any number outside. Oh, building three. I was so full of trash, so I had to head back to the boat to dump stuff off. So me and Johan went around the town, opening doors until we could see the boat. And after I dumped everything off, I went to clear another house for resources. There are so many rooms to look through for loot. It's crazy how all of these buildings are still standing after the whole planet got covered in water. Is there anything in the office, I guess, that's important for us to grab? Uh, yeah. The, one, of those, one, one part of the office, I think. It gives you access to progression, I think. I found a hidden path to the rooftop through a broken window. Kind of sketchy, though. There wasn't anything particularly important up here. It must be a different window, I think. We found access to another rooftop, though. I think this was the one Akisa was referring to. No. Oh, oh. nice catch. <sighs> what happened? Well, I'm on the He caught himself building. on a window. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> well, I window your way down, mister. Oh, there's a broken window here, you on. Uh, you, you gotta loot at the... Self. I blame the ping on that jump. Yeah, I'm gonna blame the ping. Yes. So, yeah. Juan got a job from Akisa, and that was to take notes of building numbers we went into and such. But he didn't do that. Okay, I need you to put down Chili's Burgers number 8. Um... I haven't written anything down. <laughs> what? But I remember uh, building five window. Uh, okay, well, what did I say about the swirly swirlies? Um. <laughs> so while I was trying to find the gang, Akisa ran around and typed down the numbers instead. After we were done with the houses, we had to go down to the plantation to tape up the electrical boxes. So after Akisa fixed the electrifying water, it opened up a new room which led us to the electric water purifier blueprint. After we picked up the blueprint, Akisa led us to a mysterious elevator. There's a secret button right here. I don't see any oh. button. Oh, how's your guys inventory space? Empty. Clogged. Minus 20. Oh my. Oh, 20 floors down. There should have been a CD in here. I require that. Please give me cassette. So then, we all had to find a way to the rooftop, which then led to a zip line again, which Johan has PTSD from. I literally can't do that with my pig. Oh. There was Wait. another zip line in this building here, leading onto the tower. Okay, I hate zip lines. Uh, what did I bounce <laughs> off? Oh god. But as soon as we got to the tower, we all went around it to look for an entrance. But there wasn't any other way in the tower except climbing all the way to the top. There was an elevator here leading us to a blueprint for a large storage container and a nuclear launch keypad. Okay, so let's get down to the whole reason why you one should have taken notes for the buildings. It's because it basically corresponds to the launch code that we can see in our notes. 4813 
So as soon as I pressed the numbers, something was launching off from the top of the tower, landing in the ocean. But before we were heading over there, Akisa wanted to unlock the door on the first floor first. Oh, no. oh god. Stop. What? Oh, you... Oh, my no, god. No, your head! I... What are you doing, Akisa? Go back down! You guys better come down here, I swear to god. We all saw the silo just floating in the water, so we all had to swim over to it. And once we entered, I managed to find a blueprint for the water tank and a new note. We found Akisa's character, Elaine, who was basically complaining about us launching her into the ocean. But after her speech, we had the court for our next story island, Maruna Point. Alright, after clearing every building and doing all of the clues we could, we used our vending tokens to buy some interesting items. I bought myself a piano. By the end of the day, I made an electric water purifier and then two water tanks. On day 65, I placed out a new water purifier and a water tank. I had to hook them up to the pipes, place a battery and let that sucker filter the water. It was really scuffed how I placed it though. We had a bunch of wood now, so we can continue on building the floor. There was still a lot of wood left to harvest up in this town, so we couldn't really leave yet before we grabbed it all. Now, finally, it was time to leave the area. We were gonna drift for a while to gather up more trash. <laughs> I gave the piano a try as well. That's some good music to my ears for sure. The next day, we came across the huge island to clear up. Metal detect, chop down trees, and kill some bears. And then we were off drifting in the ocean. On day 68, we started the day by farming. Farming and farming. And then some more farming. John was really enjoying the music that was playing on the cassette player. We got kind of bamboozled by it though. Are we listening to metal? <laughs> I think so. Yeah! <laughs> That's not metal! <laughs> I thought it sounded like a... Oh, okay, this is not metal. This... I could finally see it. We are definitely making some good progress on the ship. By the end of day 69... Nice. We were slowly arriving into our next story area. For this new area, we would need to make ourselves a scuba tank and flippers. But I discovered we didn't have any seaweed, so the flippers were out of the question to make. Akisa was preparing a lot of food for us in the meantime. Then we headed into the buildings looking for clues. I managed to find a construction helmet that must be for something, I think. We found our first note from someone named Grabber, who was basically talking about how good of a thief he was since Veruna Point was so open. What's going here? Oh god! Oi, helvete! <laughs> Kill it, you are! Uh, I'm trying to! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> After I killed the anglerfish, I found a spotlight part which I didn't know what to use for yet. There was another spotlight in this room here, but it was being guarded by an anglerfish that was quickly disposed of. So I quickly swam back to the boat to drop off all of the items I found. Well, I discovered that the construction helmet wasn't for anything. It was all but a cosmetic item. When I was gonna swim back to the building, Juan found a note from the grabber guy again talking about the man that arrived with his dolls. He's basically talking about Bruno, the guy from Tangaroa. Bruno climbed up on the crane with the satellite dish trying to reach Astrid, but with zero success. The grabber stole one of Bruno's dolls Miranda, so Bruno freaked out and then left. I then found a third spotlight part with the note again. He was just talking about him being proud of people recognizing him and that he hid his cash under their noses. Akiza found a note from the grabber saying that the people come and go. And that day, Ruben and Detto had arrived since they got caught in a storm and needed supplies. But when they fell asleep, grabber nicked the whole set of tools, so they freaked out in the morning and left. Hilarious. Yeah, hilarious. Oof. On day 71, there was a spotlight that I put parts into and it lit up a broken tunnel. So that's our next way to go through, I believe. As we got familiar with the traps, the guy grabber started talking again and that the people basically left this place for a new project that was taken over by rafters, which was called Utopia. 
You want you go first, okay? Ouch. Um, Ow, I took damage. You f <laughs> I, I stepped into a plank as well. I guess you one didn't pay attention at all to any of the booby traps, and he was on the verge of dying. Okay, I'm actually dead in one hit. Frick. You guys have meds. <laughs> Luckily, Akisa came clutch and gave us some healing salves. Dun, 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 dun. I did not hit that. This game is broken. Oh, oh, I made it. Oh, God movement. God movement. In this room, I found the mother load key along with another note and a blueprint for an advanced headlamp. Grabber was talking about that the water stole mother load from him and it was being guarded by a big shark. I was a bit confused where to go to for the next room, but apparently it was past the tube even deeper down. I used the mother load key and we swam through some unfinished construction until we got to a glass bridge with another door. And as soon as we reached the mother load, a shark basically opened up the door. Is that a f okay. We didn't have any other choice, so we just swam in and he started charging us. Well, I, no, he pushed me away from the oxygen. I'm <laughs> gonna die. I have n Here, Sharky, Sharky, Sharky. He's going after you, Yuan. Can he stop charging me? Go behind the pillar. We discovered that the pillars were breakable, so I guess we have to make him ram into the pillars. When the shark broke a pillar, the floor above us opened up. Good job, Yuan. Yeah, good gamer, good gamer. Okay. Chuck mercy, please. Oh, he's here now. He's behind me. He's aiming at you, Mike. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Oh, this one looks really reinforced. Yeah. Oh, oh wait, 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 wait. Oh, good, 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 good. Oh, he's out. Oh, shh! <laughs> he yeeted your ass. <laughs> oh, he's very young. Okay, there's an explosive barrel up here now. Nice, nice. So, where is he? Ah, oh, there he is. He's coming, he's coming. Okay, okay, On the last pillar he destroyed, he basically fell asleep. It led us into the next room, leading us to the next key and a wind turbine blueprint. All we had left to do was go through the tubes and up to the crane. Up at the crane, we used the key to drop something onto the other building. After zip lining over to the broken building, we dropped down a big massive hole and we found a blueprint for the advanced battery and the coordinates for the next location. I set the coordinates and then it was time to raise the anchor and leave for the next destination. Akisa was researching a lot of the blueprints so we can finally make them. Also, it's kind of crazy how our boat exactly fits through these buildings here. <laughs> Finally, we had a proper battery charger. Ooh. Oh. Is that for electricity? Yep, so now we don't have to use our biofuel to charge batteries. So by day 73, we finally arrived at Temperance, the cold winters of the north. Me and Joan were finally ready to go. Oh boy. <laughs> we found a tower with a power cable we could collect electrical cables from. There seems to be a few of them. I also spotted a snowmobile, so we didn't have to wander on foot anymore. Okay. <laughs> oh, thank god, this is second spot. I'm not gonna act surprised since we are in Antarctica, but there are a few polar bears around. No, I don't drive away. Okay, you want? Got him. I'm doing. Ah, I kill him. What a <laughs> kill steal! What a freaking kill steal! <laughs> I literally worked so hard for that. I can't believe it. I went back to pick up Akisa to give her a ride, and then we spotted that Joan um. had crashed into a rock and got stuck. <laughs> Is that Joan crashing? No, don't bite me. Uh, <laughs> give me a little push. Guys, <laughs> <laughs> don't look at me. Help me. Oh my. I can't help you, dude. 
David. Mike, do me a favor. Come ram this. I tried. Nothing happened. Oh, thank you. Okay. Hey, Mike. You. I'm kidding. You're welcome. That one is completely <laughs> fucked. Ow. Uh, <laughs> immediately ah, crashed. Jesus <laughs> crashed immediately. <laughs> Look at her. Mac, you gotta make the jump through the hole that Johan missed. Okay. I didn't miss it. I intentionally avoided it because I hesitated. Okay. A few moments later. Are you ones going for it? Okay. <laughs> Stuff. So back at the village, we had a puzzle to solve, and that was to power up all of the small houses leading up to the big one. Juan managed to get the door open and found a note from Bruno. Apparently, Detto and Henry showed him some abandoned igloos and that the boy opened them up by fiddling with the cables. Desto later introduced Ruben that was hurt from a bear attack, so Bruno patched him up. It reminded him of his sister Astrid that he was still missing. The homes were quite fabulous. I took a big interest in this penguin and fish bed sheets. Apparently Bruno was attacked by bears when they were gonna leave, but Detto saved them with an air horn. He was still unsure of the trust of Detto. Bruno thinks Detto is really smart since he patched up their boat and Ruben was feeling a bit better, but they still didn't want to talk especially around Henry. In the main house there was a couple of vending machines and an advanced biofuel refiner blueprint and a blowtorch for the next puzzle. We were all pretty stacked so we had to go back to the boat to drop things off. After we sorted out all of the stuff, we were off to the next part. I followed the keys as in she was leading us to the next area. We got into an observatory that seemed to have a lot of pictures with numbers on them. I managed to find another note from Bruno basically saying that they were ready to go, but Henry wanted to stay behind. Detto was giving Bruno some hope about his sister Astrid, but speaking of a place with lots of people and that she might be there. So back to the pictures. We think the numbers have something to do with the vault. So after a bit of thinking, we believe that we are supposed to figure out how many stars each one of these pictures on the notebook has and type it on the vault. Well, here's the planet thing, I think. How many That's, one, two, three, three four, five, five, seven, eight, nine. That's the hook, 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 hook. How many? Two, four, five, six. No, no, the second number is nine. Is that the one we're looking for, yeah? This one? Uh. That's the shape of it. Yeah. Yeah, that's it, I think. Yeah. Uh, so that's the number. Wait, hold on. Let's two, see how many three, is that. Three, four, five. Okay, so five, and then the last one should be the ref. We have to find. The Wait, I think we found the ref before. It was like the three dot. I mean, that was four of them. That that one, yeah. Cool. One, two, three, four. Yeah. I'm a god. <laughs> we solved the puzzle and got Celine's key and a blueprint for the advanced stationary anchor. So now we will be able to anchor from the steering controls. <laughs> that's the first puzzle I've probably finished in my entire life that's in the game. <laughs> Re record this, put this in. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. The next day, it was time to go towards the light. I used the blowtorch from before and Celine's key to open up the facility door. As we got down the stairwell, we saw some sort of reactor that was malfunctioning. There was also a note from a person named Sparrow. She explains that she cared about humanity and that she was sent to Celine with two colleagues. One of them was a mole and if Al was allowed to come here, this unlimited green energy would be monopolized by the same people who caused this mess. The third colleague Sparrow left behind because she couldn't trust anyone at that point. Okay, we needed three control rods and I saw that the laboratory too was open and next to it was some hazmat suits. Oh well, time to go solve this mess. Akisa explained that we have to figure out what numbers the letters are and then press them into the database. We have a time limit to type the codes in as well. So we gotta find out what the codes are on the wall. See, I was, uh, what was it again? Uh, it's 17, 17. Okay, 17, done. 
Okay, I'm done. We got the codes correctly typed in and a new door opened up. Johan found one of the control rods as well. Our next room was down a pipe where there was some roaches to kill and a lever we had to spin to open the next door. I found a second control rod in the room along with the next puzzle. In this room here, it seemed to be some sort of a laser okay, beam that we have to use to destroy oh. a door lock. You could have warned me! <laughs> oh my god. I thought it would be more fun if I didn't. Yeah. Perfect. Oh. Nice. Good job, Yuvan. What? <laughs> Good job, Yuvan. Okay. It was kind of the same thing in the next room, just a tad bigger. This puzzle was so easy with three people. Okay, let's do this. Perfect. Okay. We found the third control rod along with another note from Sparrow. She's basically talking about the Selene's facility was built to power the floating cities. It wasn't an easy task, but it has been done in theory, and all they needed was people. She heard that the people from Utopia would help, but then Olaf Wilkström took control over the community and it all stopped. So, then we inserted the control rods, activated the switch, and we got the key to the reactor. In the reactor room, we have to insert the control rods by rotating a lever and deal with the bugs at the same time. And as soon as we fix the core, the radiation disappeared and the core was happy again. Yeah, In the probably. next room ahead was a cry stored for humans. Oh dear. It had a location to our next story island and an electric smelter blueprint. That should come very handy to us. One of the humans got cryostored and he was so thankful to be rescued. This guy is one of the playable characters in the game. So all there was to do now was to drift for a bit, farm up some stuff and build the boat a bit. We were gonna hit some islands and farm for its resources. And not to bore you guys with this stuff, let me tell you guys what I think of this game so far. I have enjoyed playing Raft every minute it's been a wonderful experience with my companions exploring, surviving, and discovering new stuff. It's a super cute game, and I would highly recommend playing this with a couple of friends. I didn't have anything to do, and I was gonna give the fishing a try, and I must say, it wasn't as bad as I thought. The keys had finally made electric smelter, which is a huge upgrade. We ran into an interesting issue where both Yuan and Akiza crashed out of the game as soon as we hit the border wall of this world. So we spent the next few days just drifting. We went back to Tangaroa to harvest up some wood since it had respawned so we could try finishing up the build. So for day 82 to 84 we just farmed a lot of islands. I just wanna know. 84. The next day, me and Johan were trying out the tic-tac-toe I got from the shop. While we were sailing back to Tangaroa, I wanted to try out the new biofuel refiner. Many watermelons. I don't know how many exactly, but quite a bit, I think. It can carry a lot. Oh my god, you're going ham on this even, like, <laughs> restaurant theme. Oh my god! Wait, why are the tables so low? Finally, by day 89, we were back at Tangaroa, and I could see that the trees had respawned. So, by day 90, Akisa wanted to build the ship a bit. I was gonna give Akisa three more days to try building the ship, and then it was time to hit the last story island. I honestly didn't notice it until now, but Akisa had the same character as Joan. I wonder how long she has been playing with that one. Why are you same characters you want? Good choice. What? Am I the same character as you? I don't know what I am, so... <laughs> well, am I an old lady or am I a young lady? Young lady uh, with a basketball t-shirt, I think. Okay, for some reason. I was surprised. We had so many recipes now. And I wanted to make some proper food because I was hungry. This was gonna be our last day to farm before heading to Utopia. Our last destination. Well, it took us until day 94 to farm up the place, but now we're officially heading for Utopia. Oh my god, what is, what is this fancy spot for the birds? Yeah, it's like a bird hotel. <laughs> By day 95, I could finally see Utopia. All nicely parked up next to Utopia. So by the end of the day, 
I started by picking up a lot of the trash here and I noticed that there was so many things to do. On day 96, I found a note from Deto after a bit of exploration. He was explaining that he was excited to try out his science, but then Olaf appeared and promised to help everyone with his army. He was referring that he upped the security on his raft and only the smartest people were allowed to enter. I didn't get any of that to be honest. I went to the other part of the area to figure out how to get the electricity up and running. There was some sort of puzzle here, but when I was trying to line up some boxes, I got caught by a hyena. I'm guessing I had to try climbing my way to the roof with the boxes. There was another one of these cable things up here to drag again. I was still missing a few cables, so I couldn't line up all of them just yet. Juan came over to assist me with electrical cabling. How nice of him. <laughs> so now, the pump was finally working, so me and Juan could do this next step. Yeah, this one is working. Yeah, okay. it needs to be, it needs, the water needs to come over this way, as you can see. Yeah. So the water is starting here, yeah. Oh, there we nice. go. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, another one, really? Oh my god. Water needs to come where I'm. No, water needs to come where I'm standing. Okay, um. Oh, here we go. Oh, do you see? This one doesn't have a host. Oh. Oh. Okay, okay. I guess that somehow works. <laughs> this is confusing my brain, too. Akisa had prepared a lot of food for us since this will take a while for us to complete. Well, time to get to shoveling. I wasn't sure what we were looking for. All I got was Deto's code. Okay, so I managed to get three of Deto's code, which were used to open a locked door. There was a blueprint for a big backpack and a harpoon for the weapon on top of the building. Ooh, big backpack. We were still missing out on one item. I was quite confused about what we were missing out on. But do you guys remember the water pipe thingy me and Joan were puzzling together before? Well, the pipe leads up to the very item. Oh, I found it. What? It wasn't the water tank. So Joan found the carbon dioxide tanks, so now we can fire the harpoon that's aiming towards the building. We had one of the keys down, but we were still missing out on one of them. Johan managed to find the entrance key and a note. The note was from Hanne warning people that Olaf came here to do bad stuff and then locked up the people. Olaf was apparently up at the marketplace with his beasts. This next part here is all about parkour. This is my kind of jam, honestly. I've got about 1000 hours in Apex Legends, so I kinda know movements. I picked up a hammer next to a broken elevator. It was basically missing its cogwheel. I was gonna go help Akisa with the next puzzle where we have to balance the weight so the elevator would stop at the right floor. It was definitely easy doing this as two people. I can't believe how I can't believe. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe. <laughs> this is a catastrophe. Oh, that was it. That was that easy. Might... <laughs> now we all had to go back to the elevator and put the cogwheel back. As day 98 approached, we had finally brought the cogwheel to the elevator. We all completely scrambled our brains with the parkour. That was not the way we were supposed to go. <laughs> okay, sir. <laughs> you get, I don't know what to say. Is that? <laughs> the whole time? <laughs> it was now time to survive this boss fight. We had to try making it up to Olaf somehow, and Joan was making fun out of his Swedish English accent. Pieces? Oh my god. <laughs> I know, he's violent. Can you stop it, you Swedish <laughs> lines, Joan? <laughs> I mean, he's doing it. He started it. <laughs> no. He started it. <laughs> Mario, one. one box, one more box, please. Uh. Ow! We managed to get to Olaf, but he ran away. There was also a blueprint for an electric zip line tool and a warehouse key. 
So time to kill Olaf. I fell into the pen of hyenas. It was the same kind of puzzle here. Just stacking up some boxes. In there. Oh, can we eat now? Yep. Whoa! What is this buffed up? I'm not. There we go. You Thank you, so good. <laughs> it was finally time for the final boss battle. The worst part about this fight here was that my spear um, was about God. to break. Uh, We're switching teams. <laughs> After seeing him. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Readings. Oh. Is it the Felbor? Ow. Juke. When the boss gloats, he's not vulnerable, so I wasn't sure if we have to keep on hitting him or just wait it out. Maybe you said to throw at the gate or something? Oh, Jesus. Okay, I'm one hit away from dying. Oh, f I'm gonna back off. Oh, my god. Don't die, you one. We can't rest you here. I can't die. I'm a good gamer, okay? I'm already regening. Oh, he's, he's immune. Okay, now I need to chill a bit again. Ow! Alpha. Oh god. Okay. I don't need to. Oh, okay, I'm dead. <laughs> oh god. How are we supposed to rest? What? Oh, he's dead now. So, with the alpha dead and Joan on my shoulders, we went to confront Olaf. All of this is mine. <laughs> oh, I fell down. We got turning? the master's key, and now the we had to bring Johan back to the raft so he could be for this part as well. After three months of hard recording, this has led us to this very moment. Do you want to see yep. this speech? We have traveled many nautical miles for this moment. Oi! Pete. When the ocean itself broke civilization, the survivors were left with nothing. Yet, they persisted. The forward scouts rose up from the wreckage, defied our flooded world, and brought back hope. <laughs> now Utopia stands free once again thanks to their actions. With this final chance, we can begin this slow and difficult road to recovery. From today on, we are all forward scouts, ready to discover the next step for humanity. Beautiful. We had finally freed all of the people from Olaf's tyranny. There was a lot of people to talk to. There was even a Johan around. Ulla, Bruno. Vanessa. Johan! Oh, I see. I found Johan. You found Johan? Not what I expected, but... <laughs> I'm so unlucky. I what are you unlucky? You're lucky to be you. We all took a look through the notes, admiring how much we have accomplished. The gang wanted to spend two last days trying to finish up the boat and their private rooms. I also did some fine tuning of my room, and after all of the frustration and hard work and dedication, I felt like it was time to just relax and making my room memorable. I even helped out Juan with his room, of course. He had trouble choosing what trophy he wanted on the wall. Ha 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 ha!
and now he has needed proper text for it. Day 100! Woo! We had made it to day 100. What a journey it has been! Akisa wanted to do one last tour through the entire boat for people who wanted to see that. In the meantime, I just wanted to let you guys know that I appreciate each and every one of you out there. It's a bit different from the ones I usually do, but my recent art videos have been doing pretty bad recently and I felt like doing something different for once. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video, so please consider subscribing and liking the video so I can continue releasing good content for you guys. And maybe consider checking out the rest of my videos if you made it this far.